track with automating deployments with Hercules CI and NixOps. And you know, it's actually funny because a while back I um did um an office hours with um Robert on the same topic. So this talk is about is an introduction to Hercules CI, NixOps, and a step-by-step -step demonstration of setting up a continuous delivery pipeline with these tools. Really cool. So about Robert. He started using Nix in 2015, and as you've heard, he is the founder of Hercules CI, the CI CD service for Nix-based projects. He also wrote Arion, a Docker Compose wrapper for Nixify local development. He also wrote gitignore.nix, and he co-maintains the NixOS module system, pre-commit hooks, and Docker tools. Okay, with that out of the way, you can go ahead, Robert. All right, thank you, Robert. Sorry, one second, I shall also mention, Robert is having a bit of um, issue with um, background noise, so he may be a little bit quiet. He's gonna do his best to be as loud as possible so we can hear him. All right, thank you, Walter, peace. Um, yeah, so, so first of all, thank you so much for um, organizing this event. Um, it's been excellent so far. Um, yeah, so um, let's, let's get started. Um, So uh, we'll be looking at uh, NixOps first. It'll be a very short introduction. Um, then I'll explain a bit about Hercules CI. And then we'll have a, a look at um, using uh, Hercules CI effects uh, to achieve uh, continuous deployment. And yeah, so it, it, it won't be exactly the step-by-step the -step demo that I promised, I guess. Um, made a bit of a last minute decision to uh, um, well, not do a live demo, um, but I'll instead I'll, I'll, I'll give a tour of um, uh, how how effects can be used, um, and uh, specifically the, the the run mix ops function. Um, we'll see some of the internals and how to use it, and we'll. Um, yeah, and I'll, I'll end with a, a short section about um, the, the future of Hercules CI. So, NixOps is uh, the, uh, the deployment tool uh, in, in the Nix ecosystem. Um, there's, there's other deployment tools, but this is the, like, the, the big one. Um, you can declare your uh, deployment by specifying the the, the nodes. Um, you can specify cloud resources as well, and the attributes of those cloud resources, like IP addresses of of external services and and whatnot, can be uh, inserted into your Nix of, uh, into your Nix OS configurations. Uh, so it gives you a lot of uh, flexibility with writing your deployments. Um, so, so this is a host name, and this is just an XS configuration, and some more of that some resources uh, all go into the, the NixOps file. And then there's the NixOps command, which you can use to actually deploy it and perform uh, operations tasks like um, SSH to, uh, to the machines or copying files, uh, that, that kind of thing. And um, it's it's been around for a while, and I think it kind of shows. Um, but there's also some some progress um, being made with Nixops uh, 2.0. So there, there's a bunch of commands that uh, work with the, um, the the local state of of Nixops. Uh, you can have multiple deployments. Um, uh, which you can uh, list, create more of them, um, and those deployments in the in the local state, they, they know where the Nix files are, so you may have to, to modify uh, those deployments um, well, in, in various ways. And, um, well, it's obviously from before uh, Nix Flakes, so it also relies on, on Nix path. So these are going to be um, well, kind of challenges, I guess, uh, when, when writing um, an effect for them. 
Um, so Hercules CI, Hercules CI is uh, well the next based continuous integration service. Um, of course, there's uh, there's other solutions as well, like like Hydra, but the, the benefit of Hercules CI is that you don't have to host the the server, which is arguably the the, the most uh, maintenance intensive part of uh, of the CI system. Uh, instead, it works with just build agents. Build agents contact the the, the servers in the cloud and pick up work from there. Um, so it's a nice low maintenance uh, setup. Um, it looks looks like this. Um, in in your repo, you write an X file called ci.nix. Um, any uh, packages that you that you put in there, they will be built and automatically uploaded to uh, to a binary cache if if you have one. And the the new feature is effects um, for stuff like continuous delivery. Um, we have uh, live logs nowadays. Um, and yeah. Uh, so effects are uh, written using derivations, but they're not quite derivations. Um, it's actually similar to how uh, Nick Shell um, isn't supposed to be built. Um, it's basically the same trick that we're using here to uh, to declare how um, how some operation should be should be uh, executed. Um, it's executed in its own sandbox, which has network access, um, complete access to the root file system. Um, it can uh, read secrets. Secrets will be uh, configured on the agent machines, so um, the CI service doesn't need to know about them, which is great for security. And um, they also have access to a state API, which is useful for, uh, well, for example, the, the mix of state uh, that I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, so it's it's going to be a, a tour. We're going to see quite a bit of code if you don't like have to understand everything. Um, so I thought it was a good idea to well basically show um, that it's really not that complicated. Uh, that, that's the entire point here. That we're just using a, a function that's been written already. Um, so uh, basically, to to um, to have an effect, uh, you create an attribute and you assign um, the result of the run mix function to it. And that means it will be picked up by the agent. And um, after the build succeeds, um, the effects will run. Um, yeah, so you can see the, the basic arguments here. Um, you specify the, the source and uh, which files to, uh, to actually load and secrets and yeah, a little bit of setup and that's about it. So like I mentioned, um, they're basically derivations, um, but they we're using a different set of phases and uh, there's a special attribute to uh, to mark the the effects as such. Um, so so these are these are the essential ones. Um, you can have a source attribute. Um, that's that's great if you if you need to do um, evaluation. You, you can do evaluation inside um, the effects sandbox. Um, so there's the, the standard unpack and patch phase and the effect phase, which is where, where most of the of the magic happens. Um, and we have some additional phases for stuff like uh, getting state files and writing them out. Um, this also takes care of uh, like when there's an error, you probably don't want to um, uh, put the, the state back. Um, well, it depends on your on, on your deployment strategy. Um, 
Um, yeah, so let's start with the, with the state files. Um, like the CI effects, um, when you're using the, uh, the library for it, you also get a bunch of uh, bash functions to uh, uh, well, get, get the state file from the server and put it back in your run. Um, and you can use the, the hooks system from standard end to uh, um, add some extra behavior to it. So in this case, uh, with NixOps, we, we want to import that state into um, the, the NixOps state file. So this, this is an export. Probably should have called an export, but um, we're, we're treating it as, as the only state of, of the deployment. So uh, we import it, we export it. Uh, it's actually a bit more complicated because when it's not there yet, we want to create it. And well, we have to deal with the, the modify and the set args, um, but that's that's all taken care of. Um, yeah, so the state files, the, they're uploaded to, to the server. Uh, currently they are um, not encrypted on the agent yet. That's, that's something I'm going to build. Uh, so for now, uh, it's it's uh, it's usable, but it, it will be even more secure. Um, so they're, they're they're visible here. Uh, you can you can you can change them. Um, you can you can download the state file, and um, there's also a, a history of each state file. So, for example, if your uh, state is corrupted for whatever reason, um, you'll be able to, to refer it to uh, a known valid state. All right, so um, next up, secrets. Uh, we always have to deal with like cloud providers and well, authentication for them. So, uh, it's unavoidable to, uh, to have those. Um, they are configured on the on the agent in a, in a, in a file, it's a, it's a JSON file. And it looks like this. Uh, it's a tiny bit boiler pacey because, um, well, basically here, uh, there's going to be a, a way to configure your policies. Um, so not every repo can access every, uh, well, not, not every branch can access uh, every, every secret. Um, and it's JSON, so um, the the secrets can be can be structured data, um, or you can just have a have a file in here. Um, more about that later. Um, so effects um, effects library provides a, a, a bunch of uh, bash functions to to write these these secrets to the locations where they're, they're expected. And that's that's useful because, um, well, it, it, it doesn't look like um, much of a hassle. Uh, typically, at least when, when I'm writing this kind of thing, um, I forget about like uh, uh, a make their call um, and I get to the formatting wrong and whatever. So um, I, I think it's really nice to have these, these functions, uh, these helper functions to, uh, to make it just a little bit nicer. Um, yeah, so that's actually sufficient to, uh, to get a deployment up. Um, yeah, but we're now running effects on, on every uh, run. So that means that all your feature branches are going to be uh, deploying to uh, to your environment all the time, uh, interleaving. Uh, that's not something you want. So uh, we need a solution for that. And luckily, uh, we have uh, a programming language at our disposal. And so we can just program a solution. Um, so this is the, the run if function. Basically, you give it a Boolean 
And if it's true, it's going to actually uh, run the effect. And if it's false, it'll just build the, the dependencies. So when you integrate that, it'll, it'll look like this. Uh, the master version of the agent um, passes the, 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 the ref of the, the source. So you can check whether it's it's the right branch and then only actually deploy um, when you're building from master. And that'll then look like this. Um, I don't think the example of the pre-built attribute, uh, that's also in there. So you can actually see um, when you're uh, working on a feature branch that's not, that's not deploying, you can uh, see whether it's the, uh, a failure in your uh, deployment specification or uh, perhaps the, the build tooling has a build failure, which is also uh, possible. You can see at a glance what, uh, which one is the case. So um, deployment succeeded, um, but now we can't really use NixOps because we don't have the state file yet. Um, we, can, we can download it from the UI, um, but that's going to be rather tedious. So instead, um, we can use the Hercules CLI. Um, I just need to log in. So HCI login, you get a link, and you click the authorize button, and you can get your state on the command line. Um, I think this works, and this syntax is great for scripting, but in the end, what you really want is um, to have this behavior in Mixops, which is kind of close, I guess. Um, I've seen uh, the, the, the work on Mixops 2. Uh, that also includes support for uh, remote state files. Um, that's still in progress. So I, I hope I can help out with that and really make this super easy so you don't have to uh, write your own scripts to, to get this state and um, put it back uh, if it changes. So that can all be automatic. So you just have to call this as usual. Um, that, that's the goal. Um, so yeah, um, to conclude, we now have a setup where um, we have a build agent that's running locally on the, on the local network. Um, and we can deploy from there. Uh, we don't have to maintain a CI server. And uh, we have a deployment configuration that's all mixed. So uh, no, no YAML. Taken care of. Um, RecTCI just uses the, the GitHub permissions. So um, to uh, to work with the state files, for example, um, you need you need write access to the repo. So uh, there's really not much to configure there. Um, yeah. So uh, effects aren't quite done yet. They're a beta feature. Um, like the top priority right now is documentation. Um, this, uh, this effects feature is like really fresh. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is the, the next thing I'll, I'll be working on is making some, some excellent documentation for this. Um, just the, the goal is well, to, to make Kirk decide the easiest, um, uh, CI CD system uh, for for Nix users. Um, and I'll be making improvements uh, improvements to to the secrets. Um, so, Pan mentioned that the, um, the the state file isn't encrypted yet. So, um, 
what I really want to do is encrypt both the state files and, and secrets um, using asymmetric crypt uh, cryptography. So it'll be much easier to, to share those secrets um, and, and make the, uh, the state files more secure. Um, I'll be writing more effect functions. Right now we have functions for, uh, for NixOps, NixDarwin, and uh, Arion. Um, so I'm planning to uh, also write one for Terraform soon and uh, a simple NixOS deployer. You, you don't always need to use uh, NixOps uh, for your deployments if you're just deploying one machine uh, or maybe or maybe a couple of them. Uh, you can, um, if those machines already exist, uh, you can just uh, use NixOS uh, Nix Rebuild um, to uh, deploy to them uh, via SSH. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be making more improvements to the deployment class title, um, like the possibility to um, uh, to run uh, run effects uh, when the branch is deleted. That might be useful. Um, also, um, pull requests can be modeled that way. Um, yeah, so I guess that's the future for, for effects. And uh, for Hercules CI, um, it's uh, been a bit of a, of a painful choice, uh, but it's, it's, it's the obvious one. Um, Hercules CI has been a bit on the expensive side. Um, and I think right now it's best to increase adoption. Um, the only way to, to do that is with competitive pricing. So prices will be about half. And um, I'll announce the, the exact prices soon. Um, we have a, a trial period of one month. So uh, the, the prices will be updated uh, well, well within that period. I think, I think in the next week, it should definitely be uh, um, on the site. Um, yeah, on a more higher level, I think um, it, would be, it would be great um, to invest more in, in the next community. Um, I've been doing so. Um, with some uh, pull requests and whatnot, um, reviewing, uh, make, make, uh, goal maintaining some stuff. Um, hey, Robert, we have two minutes left for Q and A. All right, thanks. Um, yeah, so um, I, I hope um, that Hercules CI will be successful, um, uh, so I can invest more in the next community. And I, I guess I guess what I'm trying to say is, is sort of both both ways. Um, uh, yeah. So thank okay, you. so I think we have um, time for maybe one or two questions. So the first one I will tell you is: Does your threat model for secrets explicitly address the case of correctly building malicious PRs with functionality designed to steal your secrets? And if so, how? I hope that's an okay question. All right. Um, so so that's not built yet. Um, right now, the, the threat model is basically to trust everyone with right access to the repo itself. If you're using secrets with a public repo, um, actually external pull requests from, from forks, um, they won't be built. So um, as long as only uh, trustworthy uh, collaborators are, are on the repo, it should be fine. Um, that's not the end state, of course. Um, I've, I've mentioned the, um, the policies feature. Um, I'm, I'm going to build that uh, to to make it possible to um, well and enforce um, that only certain branches or certain people uh, can actually make use of, of those secrets. Right. Okay. And the last question we have is: What is the risk for vendor lock-in when using your system? Um, I don't think that's a great risk. 
Um, yes, well, it's 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 really just mixed code. You're you're writing mixed code, so definitely your derivations are um, just regular ones. Um, and with effects, well, I guess for for HCI system this is different. Um, I, I'd be happy to collaborate um, on some sort of standardization effort if people are interested in that kind of thing. Um, uh, right, right. Yeah. So I, I don't think that the login is is any any more than any any other. I would agree. Yeah. Thank you so much. We are out of time. You know, I really enjoyed your talk. You, the like sort of interface you have going on here for um, developers is really nice. Like it's really sleek, such as the bash, bash functions. You made it pretty easy for people to use this. Oh, good to hear. Thank you. Yep. Thank you very much. So everyone, please remember, put those ones, clap, show the love for this wonderful, wonderful talk. And I have one announcement after.